I don't know why you're here. I don't know if you're here because something didn't work. I don't know if you're here because something, there's some accident. But I want you to know, however you got here, you can now. God sent you here on a purpose. God sent you here on an assignment. God sent you here on a mission. Don't let nobody talk you out of your purpose and go. Ever wonder, how does the word apply to your life? Can it change you? Yes, it can. The word of God can change your life. So glad you decided to join with us today. I'm excited about today's program. It's going to bless you. One of the things I love about God is that God has a purpose. It'd be a good thing for you to say right now with me. God has a purpose. Now, when I say God has a purpose, the first thing that comes to mind is that God has a purpose for me. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for my life. God has a purpose for your life. Most definitely, God does have a purpose for your life. What's interesting is that when I say God has a purpose, not only does it mean that God has a purpose for my life, but God has a purpose for himself. That God moves intentionally. I love that. That God has a plan. That God has a will. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof. And then my job is to get my purpose aligned with his purpose. Your purpose aligned with the purpose of God. For your will to surrender to his will. That's what we're talking about today. Sit tight. We're talking about how you find your purpose and how you get your purpose in line with God's purpose. I want to draw your attention to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 where it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image in our likeness. Verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God said, let us make man. When you look at Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 and 27, you know what you're getting a chance to see? You are getting a chance to see the greatest thing that you could ever see in the Bible. You are getting a glimpse at an intentional God. You are getting a glimpse at a God that is intentional. I, 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 you are getting an opportunity to see a God that is doing something on purpose. A God that is intentional. He says, let us make man in our own image. This is not an accident. This is not something that might have happened. No, I'm God and I'm going to be intentional about what I'm getting ready to do. We're getting ready to make man in our own image, in our own likeness. And I don't know about you, but an intentional God, that's what I want to see. When I was younger, we used to sing this song in the old church. It was an old hymn, Let Me See Jesus Only. Jesus Only, Jesus Only. Let me see Jesus Only. Only He can satisfy. I realize that the only thing that can satisfy my longing is me seeing, and I, I need to see, uh, let me see an intentional God. Tell somebody that. Tell them, let me see. An intentional God. That, that was weak. Turn to your other neighbor. Say, hey, other neighbor. Let me see an intentional God. A God that has an intention. That's why you'll never get me to believe in evolution. And it's more than just because of the way I was raised. You'll never get me to believe it. I cannot believe that we are some great big giant cosmic accident. I cannot believe that some big bang happened and then something crawled out the ocean. And then by some cosmic accident we got here. I, uh, the devil is a liar. I refuse to believe that. I am not an accident. I I have been created with a divine purpose. There is a design in my life. The word said before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We are here to tell you today that you are not an accident. 
parents decided to have you, but God decided to send you, and he sent you here on a mission. I was talking to my parents just this past week. Y'all know I'm the oldest of eight kids, and so I was talking to my parents, and because I know that my parents had a bunch of children and I was the first, so I said to my parents, hey, I know, because I knew I was going to be sharing this, and so I said to my parents, I know that you planned on having me, right? I was planned. You planned on having me because you were going to have a child. You're going to have a first child at some point. So I was playing. And my dad said, well, my mom said, oh, I got to go. And then my dad said, well, you, well, we, we certainly were planning on having children. Although I don't know if we were planning on having a child in the first year that we had been married. I don't know if we were planning on getting married in 67 and having your big knucklehead in 68. And I said, well, it just messed up my whole, because I, I just knew I was about to share all kinds of stuff. But it messed, but you know what? I said, well, I don't know how I got here, and I don't know what didn't work, or I don't know if mama got happy. It's one of the things about mamas. Mamas don't get to be mamas unless they got down with somebody. You don't even hardly like to think about it. But your mama said yes to somebody. Uh, that's how you're here right now that your mama said come on and somebody slid up maybe they put some Luther on I don't know what happened but there's somehow your mama said come on over here and somebody got in on in there and got with moms and that's how you here I don't know why you're here. I don't know if you're here because something didn't work. I don't know if you're here because some, there's some accident. But I want you to know, however you got here, you here now. God sent you here on a purpose. God sent you here on an assignment. God sent you here on a mission. Don't let nobody talk you out of your purpose in God. I'm not here accidentally. I'm not floating around on the wind of chance. I believe in an intentional God. I believe that there are no accidents. Matter of fact, I believe that even the stuff that you did, that was a mistake that God said, tell you what, all things work together for the good of them who love me and who decide to be called purpose. So since I've decided to be called according to his purpose, the Lord says, hey, I'm going to work that out. And I'm going to work that out. And I'm going to work that mistake out. I'm going to work it out for your good. There are no accidents. You're not here accidentally. You are here by divine purpose. You are here by divine appointment. You're in this room for just such a moment as this. You're in America for just such a moment as you are living in this area for just such a time as this. You survived this last year for just such a moment as this. You're not an accident. The devil is a liar. You're not an accident. The devil is a liar. You're not an accident. The devil is a liar. You have been created and designed by an intentional God. Now, here's the thing about dealing with an intentional God. An intentional God has an intention. This is why folk want to just believe in Big Bang and that kind of stuff because if I, have, if I agree that there is a creator, then I have to agree and admit that I was created for something. I have to then admit that actually I can't live an accidental life with an intentional God. I have to write that down. Somebody have to tweet that. I can't live an accidental life with an intentional God. And, and we just, we live in a world in which we just, we kind of like we kind of like accidents and incidents and we just stumbled into it. I didn't even mean it. You know what I'm saying? I just found myself here. I didn't even mean it. We just, we, we almost find uh, uh, an excuse in our humanity. You realize that there is a battle for purpose. There is a battle for intention. That there's actually a struggle <laughs> that what the enemy is trying to kill and steal and destroy, what he's trying to take from you is he's trying to take God's, he's trying to take God's intention from you. He's trying to take God's purpose from you. 
As, as a matter of fact, it's exactly what happens when I look at Genesis chapter 1 and, and chapter 3. There was a time when I used to look at these scriptures and look at Adam and Eve, and I used to be a little bit salty with Adam and Eve. I used to be a little bit upset because I knew that uh, through one man's sin, Adam and sin entered the world through one man. So I used to kind of feel like, man, when I see that Adam, I'm going to be upset with him because we're all in sin as a result of Adam. But you know what? I done got, I done got a little grown now. And as a result of being a little grown and, and having some wisdom and, and being through some stuff, I sympathize with Adam and Eve. When I see them in heaven, I'm going to give them a great big hug and say, listen, I feel you. Adam and Eve, I feel you. Oh, my goodness. I feel you. I sympathize with your situation. I feel you because, I mean, first of all, you have to sympathize with Adam and Eve because, number one, you have to look at what they lost. Look at what they lost. They had perfection. They're created and they're put in Eden. Just think about it. For the rest of their lives, they were talking about what they didn't have no more. For the rest of their life, anytime they were tired or back was hurting or working hard, they, they looked at each other and said, remember Eden? Yeah, Eve was like, Adam, don't even start talking about Eden. Just don't, don't even start talking about it. But remember, remember when we had fruit and we had, remember when we had, a, remember when we walked with God? Remember how it was, girl? Do you remember? Nobody else has that as an expectation. Nobody else has that as an experience. We're all trying to get to perfection, but, but they had perfection and they lost it. The ultimate tactic of the enemy is to get you sidetracked and distracted from purpose. The ultimate plan of the enemy is to get you distracted from purpose. That's what he's trying to do. You know why? Because there's nothing like the clarity of purpose. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the clarity of intention. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the clarity of meaning, a life without meaning, a life without intention, a life without purpose is a life that's almost not worth living. So the enemy is thinking, if I can rob you of the clarity of purpose, oh, I got you. I got you. Matter of fact, the word agrees with what I just said. Let me show you. So turn really quickly to Proverbs chapter 29. Real, real, real quick. Proverbs chapter 29. It's right in the middle of your Bible. After Psalms, it's Proverbs 29, almost at the end of Proverbs and, uh, and verse 18. We're going to read one verse. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Don't lose uh, Genesis because we turn back there in just a moment. But, but let's look at Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, real, real, real quick. When you look there in Proverbs 29, 18, some of you already know where I'm going because you may know this scripture. You, you may have it memorized. But here in the NIV, it says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint. But blessed is the one who heeds wisdom instruction. So the word says there that where there is no vision, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Without, without divine guidance, folk run wild. I love the last one because he says where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, is a people made naked. Anybody glad for clothes? Oh, help us, Jesus. You might be somebody in here that looks good naked, but that's not most of us. Most of us need a belt. Most of us need a jacket. Most of us need a shirt to cover up a stretch mark or two. Don't act like y'all don't know. Most of y'all in here need a Spanx or something. Most of you need something to hold it up or else it's just going to fall right down. Most of us need a belt. We need something. You need a jacket. Don't act like I'm the only one. You, you glad you don't have to come here nude. You look a whole lot better in clothes, don't you? You can put your hand in your pocket. You ever seen that show, Biggest Loser? I'll tell you right now, I'd never get on that show. Gonna stand up on TV, national television, with shorts on. Stuff just, just falling down. I'll, I'll, I'll do it behind closed doors, but I don't want nobody to see me with nothing on. What the word is saying is, where there is no purpose, where there is no vision, the people are exposed. They're made naked. Can I tell you something? I think about this all the time. I'm thinking about it right here. It's amazing to me. I'm going to tell you right now, if you knew naked Andy, if you knew Andy without purpose, y'all wouldn't follow Andy without purpose across the street. 
<laughs> me, stand, me standing up talking to thousands of people every week and folk blogging and twittering and, and re-quoting what I say and watching me on national television. I, my soul looks back at one. I think, Lord, I tell you what, Andy with purpose is a respectable somebody. A Andy with vision. Andy in the center of the will of God. You wouldn't want to meet Andy outside of the center of the will of God. Well, look down your spiritual nose at me. I wouldn't want to meet you outside of the world. We don't want to meet you and your nasty self just doing whatever you can do, whatever you want to do. My point is, is thanks be to God that Andy without vision ain't here. Thanks be to God that Andy without purpose is not here because the Lord has actually given me purpose and given me intentionality and there's an intention to my life. I, I realize that, that so I, I feel for Adam and Eve. Go flip on back there. I'm about, to, I'm about to let you go. I feel for Adam and Eve because Adam and Eve got bumped from their purpose. Got bumped from their purpose. And, and the exact same enemy that bumped them from their purpose is the exact same enemy that's trying to bump you from your purpose. He's the same. He's doing the same stuff now that he did back then. And we here at World Overcomers are doing everything. It's why we're fasting. We are doing everything in our power to fight the devil off of your life and to battle the enemy off of your purpose. We are not going to let you go down without a fight. We are not going to let you go down and live your life by incident and accident. We are not going to let you be Forrest Gump in here. The devil is a liar. We are determined for you to understand that God has a purpose and an intention behind your life and we're not going to let the devil rob you of your purpose. We're not going to do it. And so part of the way that we're going to do that is we're going to expose what the enemy does to get you off purpose. You see it right here in Genesis chapter 3, and I'm going to show it to you really quickly. What's the stuff that they How did the enemy do it? How did the devil? I mean, good God. Adam and Eve are saved. Adam and Eve are walking in a relationship with God. Adam and Eve are perfect. Adam and Eve got everything that they need. Adam and Eve are living in a perfect situation. I'm not saying they were perfect, but they, they, they're living in a perfect situation. How did, how did the enemy get them bumped off of purpose? We don't even know what would have happened if they had never fallen. What God intended for them, we don't know. But, but somehow they got bumped off of purpose. How did that happen? Well, really quickly, you'll see it right there in Genesis chapter 3. The first thing that happened is you notice in verse 1 where it says that the, that, the, that the serpent says to them, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? So the first thing that the devil did is he used a voice on earth. He used a voice on earth. <laughs> he, 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 the, the word says that, that Satan entered the serpent. Revelations calls the devil that great serpent. So, I've done the theological study, and whether you want to talk about the, in, the devil entered the serpent or was the serpent or used the serpent, whatever, the lesson is still there. The lesson is, is that if you're not careful, that there will be serpents around you that will talk you out of your purpose. I need a few witnesses in the building because I'm sure that there's somebody in the room that can say, Pastor Andy, oh, I'm, I'm a living witness because a lot of the trouble I got into, I got into with somebody. You know exactly who it is that the enemy's trying to use, the voice he's trying to use, to trying to sidetrack you from what God wants from you. That's the first thing he did. Then the second thing that he does, you see it there in verse number two, in verse number one, because he says, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? What does he do? He makes God seem unreasonable. He made God seem unreasonable. Wow. You can't eat no fruit is what he said. Here you are with perfectly good teeth and tongue and taste buds and a stomach and you're surrounded by fruit and you can't eat fruit. I tell you, I don't know how you serve a God like that. That God is crazy. I'll tell you what, man, that God, I don't know how you're serving him. I don't know you how you're walking according to his purpose. Everything he asks you to do is absolutely unreasonable. Are you trying to tell me that you can't eat no fruit? Wow, did God really say that? Tell you what, man, that God is jacked up. Man, that's a crazy God. Yeah, wow, I feel bad for you because God's requirement is an unreasonable requirement. 
He says to her, no, you won't surely die. No, 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 that's just, that's just a religious idea. You won't just surely die. Instead, and, and, and it's, the, it's the ultimate trick. He mixes in lies with the truth. He says you won't die. And this is my whole point, is that he says to them in verse 5, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God. But if you read in verse 26 and 27, God said, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. And in verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The enemy sidetracked them by selling them on something they already had. And beloved, we are determined that the enemy is not going to trick you. We are determined that you are not going to live your life accidentally. We are determined that you are not going to live your life on the whim of chance, that you are here, that it's not an accident, that you are here for just such a moment as this one. And that God's call on you is for you to live your life intentionally. What an awesome message. Just looking at that, I'm just reminded, honey, of the energy that was in the room and when you were talking about living in purpose. And it was so amazing, the response of the people, and you can just feel their lives changing. And I'm just wondering, you know, if you would want to share what was on your heart when you developed that message? You know, one of the big things is obviously to be a Christian is to be like Christ. Yeah. And that's really the aim. I think that Christianity becomes about so many different things. Yeah. Uh, what we want or what we're desiring or I want God to bless me. I want the Lord to give me this and give me that. And that stuff is great. But really our ultimate goal is to be like Jesus. Yeah. And, and we know that Jesus lived on purpose. Uh, he said, for this very reason, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. So God was glorified by Jesus saying, no, this is why I was here for the cross. Right. This is why I was here to die for your sins. Yes. This is why I was here. And I think that if we can then look at that and say, okay, I'm a believer, right. I'm supposed to be like the Lord, I'm supposed to be like Jesus, right. which means that I'm supposed to know why I'm here right. and know what my purpose is and know what the reason for my existence is and everything else is gonna be added unto me. And we know that the word says all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Right. So then I have a confidence to know, hey, if I'm called according to his purpose, everything else is going to be added unto me. And so we, we felt that with the congregation and even those of you that are watching that felt that message and you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, yes, that's what I've got to do. I've got to find God's purpose for my life. I've got to find out why the Lord put me here. And that's what this whole series is about. That's what these this message is about, it's about you knowing your purpose, you understanding why you're on the planet, why God sent you here. And once you get connected to that, everything else is gonna be added unto you. With all of the labels that society pushes upon us, it's easy to lose sight of who we really are. Unemployed, sick, depressed, failure. These terms are hurled at us and work to confine us and restrict our God-given potential. Yet you know deep down that God created you with a greater purpose. Is it possible to find out and release the real you? Can you actually gain access to the person God destined you to be? Let today mark a new beginning as you identify your purpose through Pastor Andy's all-new Purpose Collection. We are not going to let you go down without a fight. We are not going to let you go down and live your life by incident and accident. We are not going to let you be Forrest Gump in here. The devil is a liar. We are determined for you to understand that God has a purpose and an intention behind your life. And we're not going to let the devil rob you of your purpose. Discovering the real you starts with the message series, God's Original Intent. This powerful resource will take you on a life-giving journey to find the you that God created you to be. 
As you go through these five DVDs, you'll find the blueprint for your life and the divine identity you've been missing. Not only that, you'll also discover how finding the true you brings healing to your relationships, your emotional life, and your financial decisions. Pastor Andy is committed to seeing thousands experience new life through the tools contained in this series. That's why exclusively on today's program, he's offering this five DVD series for your love gift of just $45. But wait, there's more. When you pick up the phone or go online right now to get this series, Pastor Andy will also send you a copy of the companion series, Purpose, The Meaning of Life, absolutely free. This four DVD collection, including the full length message you heard today, will help you find intention and meaning in life. You can bring your life back into focus, have certainty in your future, and walk in confidence. This series is a must-have and is guaranteed to get your life on the right track. So that's two complete series. The five DVD series, God's Original Intent, and the four DVD series, Purpose, The Meaning of Life, for your generous love gift of only $45. It's Pastor Andy's mission to see people around the world experience the freedom and joy that comes from understanding God's Word. When you donate today to get these resources, you're helping this ministry spread the gospel and bring teaching like what you experience today to those that need it. So call now to get this exclusive collection while supplies last. Don't wait another moment. Call now. No one likes to feel powerless. I realize my relationship with God is supposed to empower me. I'm not supposed to be hopeless. I'm not supposed to be powerless. You're not supposed to be sitting there hopeless without any power, without any understanding. I don't want to just live reactively. You don't want to just live your life in a reactive way. Be proactive about the will of God for your life. Take the control back through the power of God. You can do all things through Christ. He gives you the strength. And we are determined to empower you to chase after the purpose of God for your life. Now, I trust that we're blessing you. We want you to join with us. Follow us on Twitter. Connect with us as we walk out this relationship together. We want to see you back next week. We are going to find the power of God. We are going to get seriously offensive about God's purpose for our lives. And we will find, you will find, that life will overtake you and you'll be blessed more than you could have ever imagined. If you are ever in the Raleigh-Durham area, come experience Pastor Andy live at World Overcomers Christian Church, located at 2933 South Miami Boulevard in Durham, NC. Here at WOCC, our mission is simple, to empower people to have balanced victory for a God-designed life. Join us on Sundays at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., or 12.30 p.m., and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We want to see you right here at World Overcomers. For more information, visit online at www.wocctrtp.com.